complex F-105 Thunder Chief flies at Mach 2, twice the speed of sound. An airborne arsenal, ready to defend the free world from aggression. how prepared the F-105 really is. When newspapers heralded the fighter bomber as it set a new world's speed record for the 100 kilometer closed course. A TV newscaster reports the event. At Edwards Air Force Base, California today, a supersonic Air Force jet recaptured from the French the world's speed mark over a circular course. Brigadier General Joseph H. Moore, commander of the Air Force's fourth tactical fighter wing, mounts the 63-foot-long Thunder Chief and prepares for the flight that will severely test both man and machine. His path is traced each second by special space positioning camera crews and radar teams. Averaging 1,216 miles an hour, the Chief completes the course 62.14 miles in 183 seconds. But despite all obstacles, Moore makes it. A new world's record for the Thunder Chief. A proven aircraft for the Tactical Air Command of the United States Air Force. is only a small part of the story. An important segment, true. But the beginning finds its roots in research. Exhaustive experimentation. Revision of accepted conclusions in the light of newly discovered facts. Research was the starter's gun in the F-105's race to control the sky. Research, the discovery of new concepts. An odd shape in a wind tunnel scoop through which the F-105 takes in its air. New, different, but the shock waves you see now proved it a better design. Research. The effect of intense heat of an aircraft produced at high speed or re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Exhaustive experimentation. Research. Revision of accepted conclusions. New metals must be found, stronger, lighter metals. Metals and alloys of the past must give way to exotic metals, able to resist the ravages of space flight. At Republic, men armed with the knowledge of the past are searching for the answers to these problems. More than five million engineering man hours went into the creation of the Thunder Chief. For it, man has created an alter ego, the electronic brain. The information gathered is fed into the machine, analyzed and computed. Soon you will have your answer. Now you are ready for production. The first cut is made. A sheet of metal, plain, characterless, undergoes the first step in the process that will change it into an integral part of the mighty F-105. For this, too, man has created machines. Automatic machines designed to operate from coded information fed to them on either punch tape or magnetic tape. Public, employing full-time use of its large battery of automatic skin mills and profilers, helped make possible completion of the new F-105 all-weather Thunder Chief three weeks ahead of schedule. No longer a lifeless piece of metal, Man and machine have given it design, shape, function. Each part, joined with other parts, form a section of the aircraft. The after section. The center section. The nose. They have been manufactured independently, but to exact design. No room for error. 
And now the mated sections are brought to the final assembly line and placed on a jig. Now we see shape, form, and the start of life. In the final assembly area, our fledgling is given the essentials to make it complete. The heart, a powerful J-75 engine with a thrust of 20,000 pounds. In the time it takes you to walk a block, the Thunder Chief can climb eight miles. And the brain, electronics, enabling the plane to function almost automatically to any target, over any terrain, in any kind of weather. After years of research and development, and many months of building, the long hoped for day arrives. The first production airplane is delivered to the United States Air Force. It was called the world's most powerful one-man airplane by General O.P. Weiland, then commander of the Tactical Air Command at the formal presentation made by Republic President Andy I. Peel. America can be proud of the Thunder Chief and of the fact that while its performance goes up, its price goes down. A cost reduction program, enthusiastically supported by a nationwide team of subcontractors to build the F-105, in its first year saved over $25 million in production costs. At Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, the 335th Tactical Fighter Squadron, first to receive the powerful Chief, prepares to join other F-105 squadrons in a firepower demonstration. The F-105D, with its fully integrated radar, fire control, and flight control systems, allows a pilot to take off in foul, ceiling era weather, fly blind to the target, and unleash a nuclear bomb automatically, either on the deck or at 50,000 feet. The planes are loaded with an assortment of bombs and rockets. A simulated training mission executed with deadly seriousness. For the pilots of General Everest Tactical Air Command know the part they will play in the event of aggression. Each loaded with a particular means of destruction, the planes fly to the rendezvous area, some with napalm or fire bombs. This chief carries conventional bombs two 1,000-pounders. Still others are stocked with rockets, lightning fast and deadly accurate. <laughs> Approaching the rendezvous point, four chiefs equipped for strafing, their Vulcan automatic cannons fully loaded and ready to fire 20 millimeter shells at 6,000 rounds a minute. This, then, is the newest weapon of the composite air strike force of the Tactical Air Command. A versatile, highly mobile, self-sustaining package of air power, which can be dispatched from the United States and arrive in a matter of hours, anywhere in the world where a show of force is required. This is it, the Thunder Chiefs are at rendezvous. commander calls out. Okay, Tigers, let's wrap up and head for home. Man and machine, training and practice, and more practice. There's a lot at stake. The Thunder Chief is capable, yet everyone hopes it never has to perform 
the mission for which it was designed.